Hi, I'm Holly Gray, author of Dissociative Living. When I was diagnosed with Dissociative Identity Disorder six years ago, one of the biggest obstacles to healing for me was what I call the Sybil myth, the collection of misconceptions and outright falsehoods that make up the average person's understanding of DID. Um, because I didn't know anything about Dissociative Identity Disorder, I too was heavily influenced by the Sybil myth. And in short, what it asserts is that individuals with DID are broken, terribly wounded people with pasts so perversely dark that their futures are doomed to remain the same, uh, erratic, and so frighteningly dramatic that anyone can see how excessively crazy they are, violent. I know I have to have seen a media portrayal of a nonviolent multiple, but I can't think of an example. They're rare. Um, and the other side of this Sybil myth coin is that people are just creating their multiplicity as an excuse for bad behavior or to get attention. Now imagine that this is what the average person believes about something you've just been diagnosed with. This is what they believe about you. Would you feel shame? I certainly did. Um, Finding out that you have a mental illness, any mental illness, is good on the one hand because now you have a name for what ails you. And because diagnosis determines treatment, you can hopefully move forward and recover. However, when you consider the stigma that surrounds mental illness in general, it becomes clear that there's another more painful side to discovering that you have a diagnosable mental health condition. Add to that the Sybil myth, and I hope it's obvious that Many people feel like freaks when they find out they have dissociative identity disorder. They're aware of what most people believe about DID. They know that people see them as broken, terribly wounded people with dark, perverse pasts, uh, erratic, frightening, violent, or just making it all up for attention. They know that. And because so many of them are heavily influenced by the civil myth themselves, just like I was, they can't help but wonder if it's true. Um, with all of that in mind, I think it's safe to say that it'd be hard not to feel ashamed, at least initially, of DID. I was, um, I felt like I was covered in it. I felt like it just radiated off of my skin for a while. But I'm also living proof that shame doesn't have to last. I feel shame, just like anybody else, from time to time. And sometimes what I, what I feel shame about does have to do with DID but I'm not ashamed of having dissociative identity disorder. I'm not ashamed of my diagnosis. And I don't think anybody should have to be. Thanks for watching and I hope I see you online.